Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Cordant and I'm very excited to start a new video series today for Icewind Dale 2. So this is a game that I've never played before, but just recently finished playing through Icewind Dale 1, the original campaign as well as the entire expansion for Heart of Winter. And it kind of got me motivated to try Icewind Dale 2 again. Now, I say, I say try it again because, for those of you who might not be aware, um, Icewind Dale 2 does not have an enhanced edition like, let's say, Icewind Dale 1 or the Baldur's Gate series or Planescape Torment. Okay, so those games have an enhanced edition that was made by the company named Beamdog, which adds mostly a lot of quality of life and resolution fixes, the ability to zoom in and out, which is something that this game does not have. So you only have the original version of the game. So this game, previously when I tried it, it gave me some problems with widescreen fixes and some other stuff, but I'm actually pretty excited to say that this will be a run with not a Beamdog Enhanced Edition, but a community-made Enhanced Edition. So. I am pretty excited about that because there are definitely some fixes which make me want to play the game whereas in the original one I had some problems with the resolution and fog of war flickering that really kind of killed the mood for me. So technicalities aside we are going to enjoy Icewind Dale 2 in an enhanced edition and we are going to be playing with the same party that I had for Icewind Dale 1. Now, there are a couple of differences, because Icewind Dale 1 runs with uh, the advanced 2nd edition rule set for Dungeons & Dragons, which is the same one that the Baldur's Gate and Planescape Torment games use, uh, but Icewind Dale 2 is running with the 3rd edition of the Dungeons & Dragons rule set. I have played a few games with it, like Neverwinter Nights, Pathfinder, even though Pathfinder isn't really Dungeons & Dragons, but still. <laughs> Uh, I am somewhat familiar with the system, but I'm, I'm definitely not proficient with it. So expect mistakes, expect me not really knowing what I'm doing with certain skills or feats. Feel free to leave comments saying if I'm messing up, correct me. That's a way that I can learn and improve my gameplay. Um, uh, so like I was saying, Icewind Dale 1, I just completed it. It's already up in the channel and this is the party we used in Icewind Dale 1 with the differences between the, the editions. So starting off we have Mr. Cordant, which is a male rock gnome, chaotic evil sorcerer. And you'll notice also that my stats might be higher than you are used to seeing. And that's because the enhanced edition also uh, allows you to roll for stats, which is something that the original game does not. And by the way, the game, as far as I know, has been balanced to deal with rolling for stats, so it's not just a pushover. Next we have Patricia, which is our female dwarf, also chaotic evil. In this case she's going to be playing as a cleric, the battle guard of Tempus. Uh, she's going to be a frontliner, so that's why she has a lot of strength, a lot of constitution, and also high enough wisdom to cast her cleric spells. Then we have Corgan, which is going to be our male dwarf, Neutral Evil, and this guy is going to be a pure fighter. So, unlike Icewind Dale 1, uh, I cannot have Corgan play as a Berserker, because the kit does not exist. Instead, he is simply the fighter class. Uh, much the same for Cordant, he, he is not a Dragon Disciple, he's just a Sorcerer. Okay, next up we have Viconia. She is our female Deep Gnome, Chaotic Neutral, Stormlord of Talos. So another cleric, in this case not so much of a frontliner, even though I'll probably put her in the frontline as well, but she is going to mostly be uh, a support caster. Buffer, debuffer, all that jazz. Then we also have Setinhas, which is a male deep gnome chaotic evil ranger. And finally Mr. Jan Janssen, who is a male, deep gnome, chaotic neutral, conjurer. So this is a bit of a difference, he is not playing as an illusionist, because I really don't like 
um, missing out on divination spells. And for this enhanced edition, divination is the opposite school of illusion. So I'm going with Conjurer, whose opposite school is, I believe, Necromancy, which I don't really care about losing on Mr. Jan Janssen. So, notably, we do not have a thief. In Icewind Dale 1, Jan Janssen was a, a multi-class, so a, a thief mage or a mage thief. But from what I've read, the skills should be enough for a, a high intelligence wizard to properly um, take care of the tasks that a thief would usually have. So stuff like lockpicking, uh, searching for stuff, um, detecting traps and disarming them. Hopefully Mr. Jan Janssen can fulfill those tasks without the need for a dedicated thief. Okay, so one more thing to note. In Icewind Dale 2, I actually have a full party of tiny people. <laughs> so we have three deep gnomes, we have two dwarves and one rock gnome. So I'm very excited about playing with only tiny people. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, this is our party. Let's check out the game. Uncle Oswald said that Merdu Walden was full of sunsets that day. So many ships coming up the Shangarn had been set aflame by the goblin hordes that they burned to the waterline in a row like a flock of fiery geese. Some leapt overboard and tried to swim to shore, only to be cut down by orcs when they arrived. Others clung to the hulking infernos and were inevitably consumed in the flames. The rest dropped into the icy deep, snowflakes off Death's shoulders as he shrugged over the dale. So many had died already in the attacks that the failure of the Luskan forces to arrive was but a sigh, a comma in what was to be a rather long story. Only a few small ships made it through to Targos, where my uncle was watching from the upper reaches of the town. Many villagers were too busy repelling enemies at the Palisade Wall to notice a few sad, sorry stragglers make it into the port. The sun burned behind the horde, and cast a cloak of shadows over the heart of Targos and all within. It was into this shadow that uncommon mercenaries were thrust from Captain Hedron's ship, the Wicked Wench. Like many other mercenaries in the town, these few had come from Luskan. Unlike the others, their journeys would take them far beyond the rude palisades and bloody fields that lay ahead of them. Hey, so she's talking about us. Um, also something to note, if you guys have played the original game, this window is different. That's just a cosmetic change that you, you can, you are not forced to have it, but you can install with the enhanced editions. So I might as well just preface this as here as well. The enhanced edition uh, made by the community... Well, here uh, we are, straight from Bremen I'll to continue the <laughs> shore of Targus herself. Now that you'll be seeing the skeleton of the town you'll be defending, you sure you don't want me to take you back? Okay, so I just want to compliment what I was saying. Uh, this enhanced edition made by the community, for those of you who are used to modding games like Baldur's Gate, Tyswind Dale 1 and all that jazz, uh, it installs just like a Waydo mod. So very simple com uh, terminal command window where you choose the options you want and it's pretty modular, you install all the components you want and you don't install the components you don't want. Other than the Enhanced Edition, I have just one more mod. Well, not really a mod, it's a compilation of fixes, which is the Gibberling uh, 3 Tweaks Anthology. And that's just for convenience fixes, some quality of life fixes, um, some minor stuff that won't really affect the gameplay. It just helps out in other quality of life stuff. Okay, so we have reached Targos on the Wicked Winch, and our captain just spoke to us. Okay, so our options are... No, we are here to stay, Hedron. Thanks for bringing us this far. <laughs> now don't be thanking me just yet. If we mate again, just remember I offered to let you stay in the ship, so don't be cursing Hedron Kerdos for dropping you off in this place. Hmm. Okay, so what happened to those houses on the shore? Well, the ones the goblins didn't tear down, the people at Targos did. 
They're building a wall around the town, and they need all the lumber they can get. Damn wall won't keep the wind down, much less goblins, by my tell. Okay. Do you know what I can uh, can go to sign on with the Targos Guard? Well, you'd want to be saying the lord of this place. Ulbrex's his name. Good enough fella. For a lord. Where can I find Lord Ulbrek? Scale the cliffs to the main town. He's bound to be in one of the manors up there. Snag one of the locals. They can guide you better than I could. Alright, well, thanks for your help, Hedron. <laughs> you can thank me by not following foolish orders and coming back in one piece. As guests go, you've been saints aboard my ship. I got a place for it if you ever be needing it. The town seems a mite quiet, though. And Magdar, the harbor master, hasn't come to try and bleed a few coins from me for a docking fee. Watch yourself. Could be trouble in the wind. Okay, well, we'll be careful. Farewell, Hedron. Now, <laughs> just look at this amazingly sexy party of six tiny people with sticks. <laughs> I just love it. Okay, so just showing off a couple of things I noticed when I tried out the Enhanced Edition. Um, it might not look to, uh, for you guys watching the video, but a lot of these things that I'm doing are a lot smoother. So even the mouse moving around is smoother than the original game. Scrolling the window is a lot smoother as well. It doesn't... And this is with the keyboard, by the way. It doesn't have like that, that slow start and then it kind of eh, moves along slowly. And let me see if something is also available. Ah, right clicking a spell will actually show the spell information. And this is just one of the, um, the latest additions to the Enhanced Edition, and boy, is it handy. I love this. The Enhanced Edition really does some pretty good things. Yes. Okay, so if let's start actually playing the game. <laughs> we are moving out of the Wicked Winch ship. And what can we find in Targos? Oh, so actually Patricia is the one speaking. Okay, I guess the game targets the the closest character. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Halt! Who goes there? Step forward and identify yourself. Um, I'm Patricia. What happened here? What happened? Goblin raiders in town is what happened. Now get back to your ship. We've tracked down most of the little bastards, but there's still a band northeast of the docks, and there may be others about. Uh, we've come from Luskan to aid Targos. Perhaps we can help you stop these raiders. You? Look, just get back to your ship. We don't need any more blood spilled. But Re, we need help. Braun's dead, you're hurt, and we haven't even heard from the other soldiers. We don't even know how many goblins made it inside the wall. Damn it all! Alright, we need all the swords we can get. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing, I'm gonna have to lower the music volume. It's pretty loud. But by the hell, drop those pieces of firewood and grab some real weapons before you commit yourselves. There's plenty of goblin axes and shields scattered about, and here's a blade I can spare. Take it. I can't use it, my arm, the way it is. Ah, thanks for the blade, but we could also use some armor if we're going to be hunting goblins. You're right. Here, take my leather jerkin. It probably won't stop a goblin's axe, but it may turn aside a knife or arrow. Hmm. Thank you. Well, do you know how these goblins got into town? Do you think I know? There were no warning horns from the palisade, that's for sure. At first, we thought war riders had leapt the walls, but we haven't seen any of them, thank Timora. However they got in, they need to be hunted down before they can do any more harm. If they set fire to the docks, Targos is done for. What's wrong with your arm? Goblin Axe took a bite out of it. But I'm better off than Braun here. Poor bastard took a goblin arrow in the neck. Your arm looks in pretty bad shape. Your bandages are almost soaked through. Ooh, journal updated. Oh, it's the quest? Well, John here wrapped up my arm, but you're right. It's bleeding bad. If you can find the harbor master, Magdar, he might have a supply of healing draughts stored in the warehouse north of here. Oh, okay. 
Wounds are the price of battle and an inspiration to others. Let a battle guard call upon Tempus's magics to seal your wound. Oh, because she's a battle guard of Tempus. Nice. You're a healer. Looks like Timora's taking pity on us at, all, uh, at last. If you have any magic that would help, I'd be grateful. Well, I wouldn't call myself a healer, but let me see what I can do. Really? You just did. <laughs> uh, so, let's actually have Viconia. Yes, shall be done. Oh, so yeah, the UI is a bit different from what I'm used to. We have Cleric spells, and then we also have Domain spells. In this case, we're going to be using Cure Light Wounds. So, I was talking to this guy, right? Rig Redwaters. This guy is Honest John. My arm's better. Thanks for your help. Looks like you're praying to the right gods. The wound's closed, but there may be some more damage. You still don't look too good. Hey, we gained some experience. You have used your healing abilities to aid Rig. I could still use that healing draft from Magdar if you can find him. Hope the goblins haven't got to him. Okay, let me see what I can do. Now, also something you may have noticed, and this is stuff that I read about in the forums and I did try it out. Um, let me yes. pick up Patricia here. The casting time for Cure Light Wounds is 1. But when I used it, it was instantaneous. And why is that? It's because... Let me go to Viconia. We have Improved Initiative. Now, <clears throat> something important about Improved Initiative... Let me see if I can find this. And I'm sorry if I'm being very technical, but I am pretty excited about these fixes. <laughs> uh, is it a skill? No, it's, it's a feat, right? So, Improved... Initiative. So... Uh, the speed factor delay before you attack for the first time in a round is reduced by 4, and the casting time of all your spells is reduced by 1. This is something that was bugged in the original game, and this feat did nothing. And it works in the Enhanced Edition, so I'm very happy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> One final piece of tech thing. If you'll notice, while I'm scrolling the screen, the Fog of War is flickering. And this is actually the main reason why I didn't want to play Icewind Dale 2 before. Because this gets really, really annoying after a while. However, in the Enhanced Edition... Transparent Fog of War. No flickering, my friends. There is no flickering. This makes me very excited. And this is actually the main reason why I wanted to play the game with the Enhanced Edition. Okay, so I'm actually going to fix some of my things here. So the, um, the music volume is way too loud. Let's lower it a bit. And gameplay-wise, I want to lower the mouse scroll speed and speed up a little bit of the keyboard speed. In terms of feedback, I want to see the attack rolls in the console. And auto-pause, I want... Like this. Okay, that's better. Not, not as fast. Okay, well, <clears throat> let's check out the Targos dock area. We have a house. Oh, wait, before I forget, yeah, we do have the the goblin loot to pick up. And the guy did give me some weapons and armor. So in this case, I'm going to swap around my party composition a bit. I want to put my strongest characters in front. And my spellcasters in the back line. Okay. So Corgans are fighter. Let's see if we can pick up a hammer for him. Because I do believe that's what he is proficient with. So we have a short sword, we have an axe. What else have we got? Another axe. Oh, it's actually a throwing axe. 
a helmet, another leather jerkin, another throwing axe. Okay. So let me just make double sure. Uh, Mr. Corgan here, yeah, okay, so he is proficient or specialized with hammers. And Patricia, since she is a battle guard of Tempest, <laughs> she is already specialized in axes. So we will be giving her the axe and the leather jerkin and the helmet generic armor bonus one. We're going to be giving this to Mr. Corgan. Okay, let's proceed. Oh, enemy sighted. So this guy is alive. Uh, I want Morgan and Patricia to go and face him. But I'll leave the rest of my people in the back. I'm gonna swap this for Corgan, I think. 1d6 piercing. I think it might be better than the quarter stuff. Maybe. A little fire and lightning should liven things up. Ooh, that's a lot of goblins, Jesus. Um, do I have sleep? I do have sleep. So let's try and cast a sleep in this area. See if we can at least get the archers down. Okay, there goes my sleep. They're all sleeping. Okay, we killed the first um, goblin. Now, since they are asleep, it's easy for us to finish them off. There goes one, two, and three. Okay. Wonderful, my friends. Wonderful. Let's pick up Mr. Corgan. What do they have? We have some monies. More monies. Arrows and money. Arrows, money, and the shield. Shield is always useful. There's another axe. And I actually want to give the axe... Let me just check how the proficiencies work. So, with a small sword, we have base plus one and then plus four from strength. And I think it's, it's going to be the same thing with the axe, right? Except the axe is slashing, not piercing. Okay, let's go with that. Okay. What? Easy as goblin oh, pie. another shield. So, one of the main things that we lose out by not having... Uh, a beam dog enhanced edition is that um, <clears throat> that quick and easy loot bar. You actually have to click on every single piece of loot, which can be a little bit annoying at times. <laughs> I'm gonna give this to Setinish. Also gonna give him the sword. Swap his um, weapon, and the rest of us are fine. Hmm? Okay, quick save is still in queue. Is that all? What do we have here? Okay, for a moment there, it looked like the game had crashed. <laughs> okay, so we have two goblins, and then we have some. Okay, just one container. Okay. So again, I want I my front line. And setting is to go and fight. The rest of us are gonna stay back. Okay, good kill. Good. Okay, very good. Yeah, easy as goblin pie. We got a dagger, a sword and money. Okay, and now I'm actually gonna use Mr. Jan Jansen here. So, uh, for thieving abilities, I can search the shortcut is D. Okay. I'm just checking if this is trapped. Doesn't seem to be. It is locked, however. So, D, F3. Hey! Okay. Okay, so a jewel, some gold, and a dagger. Let's continue. This ship looks like it was recently shored and pieces of the hull were removed. Okay. These barrels are interactive. 
or interactable. Oh, more goblins. Wait, so the back line is gonna stay in the back line. The front line can fight. I don't like the fact that we have an archer freely, you know, shooting my party members. Okay, you can actually go for him. Okay, good, good, very good. Ready, done. Okay, more shields, more loot. It's a lot of shields actually. More arrows. Oh, there's a bow. To give to our ranger, Mr. Set English. That should help us out. Okay, yeah. and we have a friend over here. Let's... Oh, more goblins, okay. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. There's a lot of goblins oh, yeah, here. Yeah. Oh! oh! Wait, who got shot? Why is Corgan immune to piercing? I... Does this make him immune to piercing? Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, let's just continue, I guess. Okay, one of those goblins got chopped up. You go for that one, you guys can kill this one off. Okay. Good. Okay, easy so far. I'm, I'm hearing more goblins down there, but I wanna I wanna share the equipment before I actually move forward, and also speak to the guy. Okay, I'm guessing this is a dagger. No, nope, the sword. The axe, shield. Okay, so let's send our charismatic dude Absolutely. to talk to this guy. Jordan Tamewater. Damnable goblins. It seems no matter what corners of the world you go, they're always there. Who are ye? Do you stand with Targos? We are adventurers from Luskan. We just came in on the Wicked Winch and found Targos being attacked. Looks like you got here just in time then. Targos is short of good blades. Careful now. There's more of these rock crawlers about, so be on your guard. Did you kill all these goblins yourself? Aye. I still have some rock and fire in me yet. When I caught them trying to set fire to me ship, me eyes filled with blood. I've spent too long carving her hull to let it be touched by goblin filth. Okay, who are you? The name's Jordan Tamewater, and we can swap life stories another time. For now, there's goblin graves need to be filled. I like this guy. <laughs> Any idea how they got into town? <clears throat> no telling, but I didn't hear a warning horn from the palisade. What worries me is they didn't jump the town wall. What do you mean? Oh, update. These goblins were carrying pickaxes. Tells me they were sappers. The ankle biters may have broken through into some of the old caves beneath Targos and used them to get to the docks. Not good. Ankle biters. What old caves? These cliffs are thick with tunnels, but last word was the Targos guard that collapsed most of them. The tunnels were used by smugglers along the Dual Dawn years ago. The goblins may have broke into one of them and crawled beneath the palisade. Any idea which one the goblins came out of? Not sure. My guess? Somewhere to the northeast, since that's where the fighting was thickest. If you head up there, make sure you've got some trusty iron in your hands. Could be a whole mess of them crawling below. Okay, well, we'll be on our guard. Watch yourself, Jordan. I will. You watch yourself as well, and if you find any goblins and there are too many for you, just lead them back this way and I can lend me iron to yours. 
between us, we'll drive them back into their holes. Sounds good to me. Farewell, Jordan. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so let's <laughs> share our equipment. So we picked up a short bow. This is gonna go for setting ish. Arrows, setting ish. The helmet is for Patricia. Okay. Uh, I guess I can also give an axe. Wait, this is no, this is a martial weapon, so she cannot use it. She can use a simple weapon, however. So you can take a short sword and a shield. Leather jerkin, I'm gonna give it to Setinish. And that's about it. You can have the bow. Let's see what your attack... Oh yeah, plus 8. <laughs> base, de <laughs> base upgrade, proficiency upgrade and 5 from dexterity. This is level 1, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Okay, anything else I want to concern myself with? I don't think so. Okay. I hear you. Not a problem. So let's check out this house. Come on, guys. What you doing? Okay, no enemies. I'm here. Here I go. But this may be trapped. So, let's check for traps. Oh, okay. Immediately found a trap. Cool. And let's disarm it. It's also locked. Okay, so, so far at least... Ooh. <coughs> a hammer. That's gonna go for Corgan. Um, so, I was gonna say, so far, it appears that Mr. Jan Janssen is filling the... Um, the role of a thief rather well. So what is this? Murky liquor. This is flashing a little bit, but it's not that worrisome. With the right ingredients, a skilled alchemist can alter the very nature of a living being. By dissolving rock salt and frog juice in an alcohol-based solution and adding the remains of a deer or antelope digested in a crocodile's stomach, what the hell? An alchemist can concoct a smoky potion that transforms a drinker's body into a semi-liquid state. The drinker retains all of their normal functions, but the liquid state cushions the impact of enemy attacks, granting a three... Uh, I don't know what this is... three-something resistance to all forms of physical damage for 10 rounds. Okay. Uh, we have a cool-looking helmet. It appears to be the same thing as the one I'm using, but it looks cooler, so let's give it to Corgan. A crossbow is a simple weapon, so we're going to be giving this to, for example, Mr. Jan Janssen. And we also have some more leather armor and a studded leather armor, so strongest armor goes for Corgan. We can give the leather armor to our other clerics and I don't want my wizards using armor because it does have an arcane spell failure penalty. Okay, so we do have a warhammer. Hammers actually deal 1d8 damage here. In Baldur's Gate they deal 1d4, <laughs> so it's, it's double damage. Okay, pretty cool. So, Mr. Corgan, he is specialized in hammers, so with the axe we have a plus 5 to hit, Oops. and with the hammer we have a plus 7 to hit. Okay, pretty good. I'm very happy about it. Um, this is also a martial weapon, so nobody else can really use it. Maybe Setinish can use it? Let me just check. No, because he's a, he's a ranger. So let me just make sure. Yeah, okay, so no, no bonuses. Take this out. Okay. So some equipment has been acquired. I think we've checked out all of this, 
all of these containers. What? We did indeed. I... Okay. Time for the next house. Not a problem. Is there something over here? There is an axe. This is actually a battle axe. Oh, so this is one. This is one d eight slashing, while this is one d six slashing. Okay, so Patricia can be happy. She just got an upgrade. I'm here. And I'm hitting goblins. Rah, 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 behind this place. So let's see. Okay, it's just one goblin. No, two goblins. Okay. Nice hit with the hammer. Oh, four goblins after all. Go team! Yeah. Okay. I'm actually thinking if if playing the game on a lower resolution would be better for the videos, <clears throat> because stuff does look quite tiny. Even for me, I'm, I might I might test it out. Okay, and let's check out this final house before we end up this episode. Okay, there's three goblins. There's a lot of cats. <laughs> Two containers and a woman. Fertha Kerdos. Oh, she has the same last name as the guy on the ship. Okay, maybe it's his wife. Ready. Okay, so Corgan can I... kill this yes. one. Patrice can go me. for that one. What? Vaconia go for say? that one. And we can just ready. shoot whatever is left. I actually gave him the crossbow but forgot to switch. So now he is using the crossbow. Oh, one shot. Okay. Which as you desire. Yeah, right then. Pretty good battle so far. This is a short sword, I might take it to sell it. Container is empty. What is the cat blocking my way? Cat? Please leave. Strangely enough, this cat has nothing to say to you. <laughs> yes, very strange. Can you move? Kitty? Well, they do move around. Ah, okay, thank you. Some gold. You Charismatic you person, play. myself, Mr. Corden. Let's speak to the lady. What are you doing in me home? Away with ye! Bitch, we just saved you. Please, calm down. We just had some questions. Oh, is that so? Well, then I'm certain as the dial is cold that it will please ye to leave me home. Out! Out of where I came here hide from here to Bremen, you filthy robbers. <laughs> We're not robbers. Oh, yeah. Look, you filthy banshee. Enough of your howling or we will rob you. <laughs> eh? What? How dare ye? Be silent. I've heard enough from you. We came and saved your life and you offer no word of thanks, no appreciation. Now, he look here. I didn't ask you to... Did your mother teach you nothing of manners so much that you spit upon an offered hand of help? <laughs> I, I'm loving the dialogue in this game, by the way. I won't hear such words spoken in my own home. Git! Git ye gone! Nothing would please me more. Farewell. What a bitch! She didn't thank me, she didn't give me a reward, and I just saved her life. Easy as goblin pie. Okay, lady. Not a problem. I see how this is. This looks like a tavern. The Salty Dog Tavern. Okay, correct. And we'll be going there next. Maybe I'll just explore this area first. Okay, so that is it for our first episode. Um, if I sound very excited talking about the in Weisswind Dale 2 and the Enhanced Edition, is because I really am. You guys cannot imagine how 
how much of a difference it makes to me to be playing this game and let me actually save the game and not have the goddamn fog of war flickering and stuttering when i move the camera it's such a huge huge quality of life improvement and also stuff like this that you that you didn't have before you couldn't click the spell to, to learn the description in case you wanna you know if you wanna check what the cast time is or the range or duration you would actually have to go into the spell book let me actually check I think you had to go here and then I'm not even sure if this is an original game as well or you would have to go into information uh, I am not even sure. Now, I I'm guessing if you went into the spell book, you could read the description. But you couldn't do it uh, here. And this is something that should always be present. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to shut up about the, about the Enhanced Edition. But I am very happy about it. Um, maybe later on in the game, it it crashes or it makes something weird. I don't know. But I've also never played the original game, so I won't really have much to compare it to. For those of you who have, if you see any kind of noticeable change, for the better or worse, feel free to let me know. I'm always interested in that, in that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, for now, that is all. In the next episode, we will be exploring the rest of Targos. And as always... Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this playthrough of Icewind Dale 2. I hope it's as good as the first game and as good as the Baldur's Gate games, at least in a, in a in a sense. I don't think it can really compete to its full extent with the Baldur's Gate games, but it can still be very enjoyable like the first one was. Um, so, like I always say, if you guys have any questions, any suggestions, in this particular case, if you want to mention something about the third edition rule set, how it compares to the second edition, if I'm doing something wrong with the edition changes, leave a comment. I would love to learn from it and interact with you guys about these things. If you want to get notified about other videos coming to the channel, be it Icewind Dale 2 or any other kind of video, uh, feel free to subscribe. It's free. It helps me out. Videos are coming out daily. Um, and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone. <laughs>